Let me start. <laughs> uh, thank, thank, <coughs> thank you, um, uh, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Honourable Minister for his statement. In fact, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, some of the plans uh, and processes that he has outlined, uh, I think those, those are important. They need to continue to do that. And, and we need to plan those things, uh, but much of it, of course, is contingent upon uh, when and how the borders open, uh, when and how we're going to get our tourists back into the country. Um, Mr. Speaker, the survival of the tourism industry, as we all know, uh, is at stake. And we, we have no choice, but also we cannot wait uh, much longer to ensure that our hotels, um, the other infrastructure. I mean, if the period that we are looking at or hoping in which we would be able to get tourism back on track uh, to some extent uh, is unpredictable. We don't know. And there is a lot of uncertainty out there, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, I think it is important uh, for us to ensure that we are ready you know, our, our investors, our operators in the tourism industry are ready to receive tourists when, whenever this global crisis uh, ends. Uh, and, and the point I want to make, uh, Mr. Speaker, 80% of our tourism industry in this country uh, is small to medium enterprises. And much of that 80% of uh, small and medium enterprises are actually owned by Fiji citizens. And in fact, um, Mr. Speaker, much of the employment within the tourism industry, you know, if you add it all together, you know, if you look at all the big operators, the large hotels, and then you look at those uh, employed in the small and medium enterprises, they probably represent about 70 to 80 percent uh, of the workers. And, and therefore, Mr. Speaker, it is very important. I mean, it doesn't uh, only uh, is the responsibility of the Minister for Tourism. I can understand why he would have concentrated on looking at some of the plans and proposals and facilitating, you know, investment in that sector. And I think, you know, as I said, you know, they need to carry that on. But I think the bigger responsibility of ensuring that thousands of workers any small medium enterprises in the tourism industry which are struggling today and which need to be supported, I don't see any kind of comprehensive plan or a, a, a process where they need to, uh, where they can get the help. Uh, I remember, Mr. Speaker, I had suggested a worker solidarity fund. I mean, the government reduced the the FNPF contribution, the government is saving close to about four to five million dollars a month. And, and Mr. Speaker, there are many workers out there, you know, who would not have access to what the Honorable Minister was saying. I mean, there are some good examples of that 7,000, 14,000, 21,000 uh, loan scheme that small and medium enterprises could get. But it's a very small amount. Many thousands I know had, had, had are out there, you know, struggling to make ends meet. And, and therefore, Mr. Speaker, I think it is, it is important for the government to consider a fund for all those workers who have lost jobs, who are struggling to put food on the table, who, I mean, I was told by an NGO representative in, in Nandi that while we were, you know, she was complaining to us about, you know, everyone concentrating in Banu Levu, uh, and, and not worried about, you know, how children were struggling or parents were struggling to uh, get the children to the school. Mr. Speaker, uh, well, uh, Mr. Speaker, I can hear the interjection from the Honorable Minister for Education. Perhaps he cannot see some of those through his, through his heavily tinted Prado, you know. <laughs> let, me, let me also uh, uh, quote this figure, Mr. Speaker. The uh, Household Income Expenditure Survey uh, report has just come out uh, on Monday, and this survey was conducted in the period February 2019 to February 2020, before the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. And what it shows, of course, is that Fiji's official poverty 
Headcount rate for 2019-2020 is estimated at 29.9 percent, almost an increase of about 2 percent from the last household income expenditure survey in 2013 and 14. What this means, Mr. Speaker, is that, you know, if you look at about 30 percent of those uh, below poverty line, at any time, Mr. Speaker, in this country, about 20 to 25 percent of the, the individuals or families are on the margins of poverty. And I think what has happened in the last one year because of the pandemic, because thousands of people have lost jobs, the poverty rate, Mr. Speaker, could well be over 50 percent. And I think government should not ignore that. Government should come out and, and look at a package, which I said the other day, Mr. Speaker, on health, education and income support, because this is what we need to do until we get the economy back on track, until the pandemic is over, because these three focus areas will help the economy, will sustain the economy, and will create a, a level of demand that will be sustainable, and we can you know, carry on until the pandemic you know, is, is uh, until we see the light at the end of the tunnel where this pandemic is over. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the leader of the National Federation Party for his contribution to the debate. Honorable members.